It's a very good morning to you and thank you so much for watching. This is the Free Ride Podcast and of course today I'm excited because I've got a guy who's going to give us so much knowledge, so much information. His name is Gerald Mwandiambira. Uh, he's a financial expert. He's an author of a book called My Money. Uh, he's a speaker, he's an entrepreneur and a certified financial planner. So he joins me today. So thank you very much. For all of you who are liking, who are sharing, who are interested in this content, we really do appreciate you. Continue to do the same. And uh, yeah, let me welcome my guest, man. Abuti, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good, good. good. Yeah, uh, I've seen you on TV many years. You've been doing, you've been sharing your knowledge, expertise mm. with South Africans for years, trying to get them to, to learn mm. about finances. Are you good? I'm good, man. It's a, it's, it's a war. Yeah. <laughs> it's really a war. I think, you know, I was watching um, Sarafina the other day. Yeah. And realizing how little we've moved in terms of empowering ourselves financially. True. Um, a lot of those scenes are still being repeated in Soweto today. Yeah. Same school. Absolutely. Same same desk. Yeah. And we, have, we haven't moved. And... Um, the reason July, June 16 happened was because they didn't want Africans. They didn't want to be taught a certain way. Yeah. But we are still being taught the, the same way. Absolutely. Which is to be, we're being prepared to be slaves, money slaves, as opposed to money masters. Yes. So that's the concept in my book where I said, if you read this book, I want to leave you a money master. Money is a tool. Yeah. It's like a it's like a hammer. Yeah. If you don't know how to use it, you're gonna hurt yourself. <laughs> and the thing is we don't know how to use our money. Yeah. So we remain money slaves. Month end controls us instead of us controlling month end. Yeah. You know, so we get nervous, we get anxious, we, we, we can't function when we don't have money. Yeah. Whereas it should be the other way around where you did tell your money where to go. And the nice thing about money is it's linear. Yeah. Money is a formula. There's no secret to it. You do, you do certain things. They will happen. Absolutely. And the thing about it, those are the financial laws I want to empower people with. Um, I've now got three books. Yeah. One for the youth called Young Money. Um, one for entrepreneurs yeah. called Our Money. Because I think the entrepreneurial one, I fell into it because I left my job. Yeah. And the hustle. Yeah. So I've written about it. All my pain, um, all the things you need to know, everything from contracts, franchises, invoicing, tax. Um, all the stuff which no one teaches you when you're starting on your own. Yeah. Um, like have your money on the side before you even start the business and check it with your spouse. Hey, don't just come home and say, <laughs> Hey, daddy is now starting a business. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, it affects everybody. So in answer to your question, yeah, I think we, we've got a lot to learn financially. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a pity that so few of us are really taking the time to actually empower ourselves actively. Mm. Absolutely. And I think before we get into the details of your book and everything you just spoke about, let's start with you first. I mean, uh, who is Gerald? Yo, I'm just a African man. Yeah. Grew up in Zim. Um, born and bred. Born and bred until around 18. Around 18, then I caught a flight. You left? I left because like, um, <coughs> you know, we were, we were grown up, we were raised in the British colonial system. Yeah. So our <coughs> goal in life mm. was to end up in London. Mm. So 18, I caught my first plane, British Airways, Harare, London. I said, later, Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> Never gonna see you. Smell you later, Africa. So, yeah. <laughs> la <laughs> we landed in London and yeah, it was tough. Um, mm. um, but I was ambitious. I think uh, my parents didn't have money to go pay for UK varsity. So when I was in the UK, initially I think I went to do nursing, but I never even went for a day. Yeah, I applied for, for a bursary. Um, and there were 7,000 applicants and I was one of the 40 who got it Yo. for architecture. Ah. Next thing I was doing. Varsity architecture, <clears throat> then eventually I switched into into finance, and I stayed in the UK a good 10, 15 years. What? Um, in, my, a, in London? Yeah, my parents passed away in the UK, um, and then, you know, I think my aha moment was, 
I was working for a big company in the square mile in London, the best jobs, the best places to work, good money. I was earning good money. I think in 2005, I was earning like 50,000 pounds a year. Huh. <laughs> but my problem was when yeah. I started reporting to cats who I trained. Mm. And then I realized color. Okay. This is not my market. It's not my natural market. Um, and at that time now, I was working for Barclays, and Barclays had just put APSA. So I was like, ah, this APSA thing sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's go to South Africa. Let me go check it out. Yeah, because at least black people mm. there are loved. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. So that's how I ended up in South Africa. And and um, the rest is about um, getting started in SA, started in insurance. Um, and then I, from Liberty, I was head of Africa for Standard mm. Bank Sales. Mm. And that was a nice job, you know, again. Yeah. Um, a aha moment I'd catch flights to anywhere in Africa And I'd stay at the Serena Hotel Sheraton Hotel Five star oh. Every flight I'm business class Yeah But I'm earning 20 grand dude Oh no way Yeah bro. yeah 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 When I arrive in Africa I'm, I'm, I'm cool boss Yeah I'm cool boss Yeah But when I come back here I'm just another cat oh. You know and I think I just got married And my wife was like You know dude uh, Take me to these places And I realized I can't even afford my own flight to go to Nairobi. I can't afford a night at the Serena, which is like three, three, four thousand rand a night. Yes. And I used to stay there two weeks. So again, it was an aha of, I'm being used here. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, a, what is this? I'm just a dish towel. Yes. You know, um, and when my daughter was born, I think um, I spent her first 20 days working for the man for 20 grand. So I was like, no, this is not going to work. So. Yeah. Ventured into entrepreneurship, and yeah, the, the story from there is long. It's painful. Yeah. Um. Initially, when you started, when I started, it was happening, deals yeah. coming, coming, networks. coming, networks popping. Yeah. And then you, I met the 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 one where your staff member steals, you hacks your money, my friend. Ah. Yeah. That's possible. No, it's possible. I had, I was doing contracts in Mozambique, and I had a translator, so she used to negotiate and translate. So normally it would be 50% upfront, which is to pay for the actual cost. Mm. And 50% is my margin. Mm. So it's a nice margin. Call the client. Hey, where's my ends? You know, I, I, I've delivered. They're like, no, dude, we paid you two days after your stuff came. Just call the ladies. Uh, the lady called cops on me in her country ah. saying I'm a foreigner. Ah. <laughs> Hounded me out. <laughs> what? Hey, doing business in Africa is it's rough. <laughs> yeah, she pulled the xenophobia on me and most of you like, hey, yeah. if you want this money, yeah. go to see the cops. Just as. So, and you couldn't, you have no ground to stand on. Yo, so entrepreneurship has been a tough journey for you. Mm. It's, it's so... It sounds nice when you say I'm an entrepreneur, right? It's just a nice word, guys. <laughs> entrepreneur basically means that if I don't work today, I don't eat tomorrow. Jesus. And you need to work every day. Yeah. And the thing about it, sometimes you don't even control the work because you're depending on others to allow you to work with them. Yes. So yeah. as an entrepreneur, you always need that anchor client. Yeah. You need that one client. Before you, you quit your job and say, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, have one contract with a solid client who you know they're gonna pay your bills. Yeah, yeah. You know, at least the at basics. Least are the covered. basic, yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have that, it's going to be a challenge. Next thing, I, I went into franchises, where you know people say we're going to give you our money to make you rich. Yeah. Ah, those are fairy tales. Then no way. Like, right, Doesn't work. Who gives you uh, their money to yeah. make you rich? No. no. <laughs> give you their money to make them rich, and if you fail, you owe them. So, yes. so that's a franchise for you, straight up. In one line, franchise is somebody giving you their money to make them rich. And if you fail, you owe them back their money. And so for them, yeah, there's no loss. No risk. No risk. Mm. So they so they seem like they're making you look good, but it's, it doesn't work, like, work out like that. You know, I want to go back to the kind of education you got in Zim. And how, as Zimbabweans, you guys received more of a superior... Education system. Look, what, I th was it the case? I think the education was good, man. But look, dude, they taught me about a locust and mandibles. <laughs> Who cares about the man? Hey, hey what, what do I do with what that? What am I going to do with the mandible? 
What am I going to do with knowing that uh, <laughs> a locust. Uh, uh, when a human is formed, it starts with a zygote yeah. and a dicotyledon. <laughs> Who cares about a dicotyledon and uh, a stigma on a flower? Yeah. No, I want to know how to make money. Yeah, how to so, survive. How to taxes. survive. So the, the only thing about it is that because Zim was rough, yeah. the banks didn't lend money. If you had a house, if you had a car, you had to make it happen yourself. So yeah. naturally, we were we were forced to become entrepreneurial oh. because we weren't raised to work for the man. Whereas here in Zanzi, you can go to the bank and buy a house, which you think you've bought, but you haven't bought a house. The house belongs to the bank. Yeah. And, so. and by the time you finish paying it off, you bought the bank two houses. Justice. So and you and you smiling and the thing about it you're so grateful you even have a housewarming party yeah to celebrate the bank's house <laughs> not your house and that's what I try and tell people you dude you want to you want to beat the bank at their own game you're not gonna win. yeah no you can you can yeah that's what I teach people oh. say okay let's use their money yeah to beat them at their own game get that house from them pay it off early get another house with their money. Oh, never yeah. pay them interest. Yeah, use them. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> they know that the vast majority of people are going to work twenty entire years mm. to buy two houses for the bank, and those who are super lazy who take a thirty-year bond, three houses for the bank. But is it is it because the banks have just monopolized the economy? Is it a scam? It's not a scam. A bank is like a business. It's a business. It's the original Ponzi scheme. You know, yeah, the bank, <laughs> the original pyramid scheme. It's a bank, the mafia. Yeah, but they are working for shareholders. Yeah, and their shareholders say, "Make it happen," which is why you can find a bank can give you enough money to buy a house for a car, and you pay it off over five years. It's crazy. But you try and do that for a house, they'll tell you, uh, uh, uh. So, uh, so yeah. can, can a bank make it possible for everyone to have a house which they pay off in five years? Yeah. Yeah. But they won't make money. They won't make money. They won't get their second house. Yeah. They'll have to charge you less interest. They don't want that. It's crazy because you can get a loan for five years, 700000 mm. for a car. Yeah. And you pay five, five years. years. Done. But for a house. But also, you know, I was checking at somebody saying that the Islamic bank is a bit different, their model. Yes, the Islamic bank uh, and their system is has no interest in it. Yeah. So their home loans, you literally pay pay back what you borrowed. So it's it's a fairer way of doing business. Yeah. And hence, they. That's why. Also, when you look at the Muslim cats and like, how come they seem to do so well? Because they don't pay interest. <laughs> They're not charging each other interest. They're not screwing each other over. Yeah. They're yeah. literally helping each other to get a leg up in life. You know. And when, when money circulates, among and, them. yes, because. Because they're working in a no-interest environment, they don't allow outsiders in. Yes. You yes, know, because yeah. you're going to contaminate their pool. Yes. You know, so so you can't go and borrow their money and lend it out. No, they lend to each other. Yeah. And, but in, in most, in most um, cultures, they have their own inner circle. The Indians have it. The Jews have it. It's the true. only people who don't have an inner circle is blacks. It's so true. We're busy hating on each other because you're Zulu, you're Tosa, you're Zimbabwean, you're Zambian. And we're hating so much mm. that we can't even keep one rand mm. to circulate three times amongst us. Yeah. We, we, we're quick to run to, you know, um, the clubs, you know. No one's ever asked who owns rockets. Mm. It's some Lebanese cat yeah. and who is eating pretty. They eat and it. all these guys who own these nightclubs and the, the places we go and spend top dollar, normally Portuguese, Lebanese. True. And they figured it out. Could you know, Blacks, they like this. Mm. So let's give them lights. Let's give them sparkles. Mm. They'll give us their money. And, yeah. and they'll come back to work tomorrow for us again. And I heard somebody, some lady was actually saying that even some of the alcohol you drink, when you start, you probably drink the original. But after the second bottle, third bottle... They give you fake. They give you fake. You I don't mean, even I'm know. I when I talk to the waiters. They tell me, look, man, you Johnny Blue way. It's all Johnny Red. Oh! And a Johnny Blue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after you taste bad, they're burnt, dude. How are you going to taste? Are you going to taste? Yeah, I taste nothing. Yeah. The only people <laughs> who can taste it are the ones who, who only drink it. Yeah. 
So if yeah. I only yeah. drink Johnny Blue every day all my life at home, yeah. then the moment I get, get phone call, I'm like, ah, 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 what's this? Yeah, because when you're at the club, mm, you want to show off. No, we just want to show off. And, yeah. and it's you, not your regular. <laughs> look, and they're dashing it. Yeah. Thought, what kind of idiot puts yeah. coke in yeah. a whiskey? And, and you hey. think you're going to know the difference. Ah, come on. You're just going to be tasting coke. Yeah. Mm. So is, is the problem then the financial literacy at a school level? Yes, I think at a school level, we need to realize that money can be created. The man has taught us that money is owned by him and he owns the cake and you're fighting for a piece of the cake. Yeah. Whereas in reality, the cake is going bigger every day. Hmm. So if I gave you a hundred rand and you bought some wood and you built a chair hmm. and then tomorrow you sold that chair for 300 rand, where did the 200 rand come from? Hmm. You made it. Yeah. You sold. Yeah. Yeah. You, you created made it. something, yeah. Yeah, so does that mean money finishes? No. no. It means every day in the world, there's more money. Being printed. And being created by people's minds. So we need to grab that mindset to realize that you can create wealth and the money in the world does not finish. Therefore, you and I should never compete because you are creating your line of money. I'm creating my line of money. We're not fighting for the same pie. Okay, so now let's go back to the history of money. Because, like, like uh, you know, when you think trade, people used to trade by goats, mm. trade with cattle and whatever. Some guys somewhere thought, no, man, we need to create something. No, and I, it moved from your gold coins to copper coins to the real value of money. Is, look, originally... What happened was, when they printed a hundred rand, yeah, in the reserve bank there was a hundred rand worth of gold. So the paper was just a representation of the gold which they are holding. Okay. okay. So so that's why it had value. Okay. Okay. And then over time, it just moved to just being paper. But originally, when uh, when you're holding a hundred rand, you could go back to the reserve bank and say, "I don't want this paper anymore. Give me my hundred rand worth of gold." Oh, okay. So yeah. gold is the ultimate savings vehicle. That's another thing I need to teach cats. Yeah. You know, if we just been, if I'd been buying Kruger Rands twenty years ago, I'd be smiling. Instead of buying uh, all the other uh, crap no, you bought along no, the way, no, no. right now, <laughs> yes. make it your goal buy one Kruger Rand a year. That, and that thing, doesn't depreciate. That thing can't depreciate. It goes up and up. Whenever there's a war in the world, watch what happens to the gold price. Yeah. Because gold is the ultimate storage of wealth. And here's the here's the, the one thing to blow your mind. 80% of the gold in the world comes from South Africa. 80%? Yeah. The entire British economy, the entire European economy is held by our gold, which they stole. And we don't own any of them. We owe, we owe them money. So, so It's under us, but we owe them. They took it. They took it. That's what colonialism was about. They stole our wealth. You know, you know, they stole our wealth, the gold, and then they took our land and then they took our cattle. So as a black man, you come into this world and you have nothing. And then they indoctrinate you and, and then they make you work to buy your own stuff back. So, so when you now go back and you're now buying a Kruger Rand, yeah. it's really gold, which our ancestors owned. Yes. So, so it's deep when you start realizing that. And, and whenever African countries start mentioning that, hey, but the country have some of our stuff back, uh, they, they don't want to hear it. They they, they, vic they they deal with a leader who speaks the loudest. Yes. Like Gaddafi. Yeah. No, the, the Gaddafi had that whole United States of Africa. Yeah. And that scared the world. Because yeah. the United States of Africa could shut down the world. Because yeah. Africa is the only continent that can that's self-sufficient. They don't need anything from anyone else. And, yeah. and the rest of the world are like, this guy and his idea is too dangerous for us. And even if you look at this Russia-Ukraine war, it's really about the Russians saying, why do we have to use U.S. dollars? Oh. Who said the U.S. dollar is the international trade money? True. So, so, so hence now they're saying anyone who wants a Russian oil, you buy it in their currency. So it's, 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 it's really an economic war. Yeah, and the yeah. Chinese have stepped in and said, yeah, also use our money as well. Yes. Because the Chinese are like, why are we buying US dollars and keeping them, mm. you know? Mm. So, And of course, I think what I liked about what Gaddafi was looking at was to say, we have gold, we have oil. Uh, 
why don't we our own currency be yes. backed by the resources we have? Yeah. It's like we've got our own stuff. You know, it's sad. Like Nigeria, where they've got oil. They take the oil. It goes to Europe. It gets refined and comes back and they buy it. Jesus. And and that's the problem. Same thing with, with a lot of the stuff that we have in South Africa. Our platinum, it goes out, comes back, we're buying it as finished product. So we need to change our mindsets. And it starts at school, as you said, where we need to realize that we we, we own our resources. Yeah. And our resources are worth something. We need to go to back to basics. You know, the youth of today won't... You know, they won't deal with chickens or livestock, but that's the quickest way to create wealth mm. without owing anyone. Mm. Mm. You mm. buy uh, chickens, they will multiply on their own. All you're doing is feeding them. Mm. That's money coming. And that's how money is created. All these cats are saying, unemployed, unemployed. I need the man to give me a job. No, you don't need the man. You need two chickens. That's all you need. Two chickens. Yeah. And then you can run around, collect from the bins, feed your chickens. And then that's it. You sell the eggs. You sell the eggs. You sell the chickens. Sell the chickens. Yeah. Same thing with pigs or cows. It's a it's a time game. Mm. In two years, you won't be the same man. Mm. But you will owe no one. Mm. But we prefer the model where we need to go and actually borrow. Or but, we just like the comfort of being told every month, 350. 350, I could buy chickens, eh? Mm. If you yeah. and I had 700 rand, we can buy a few chickens. Mm. You know, in a few months... We keep adding our 350s. Mm. We've got chickens. Is, is it like, I mean, I, I think of school because I remember there were guys who wanted to start small businesses at mm. school. Then you get told, no, why are you selling sweets? Why mm. are you selling this? Yes. Stop selling. And then there's entrepreneurship day at school. Then it's one day. And, and then the rest one of day the whole year when you can sell your sweets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then they want you to go buy it from the tuck shop, which is owned by some white kid's mom. Yeah. 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 So there is no, so they want us to become employees, and then we wonder why the economy is as bad as it is. We are trained still Bantus to be housemaids and garden boys, except we wear heels and suits mm -hmm. instead of an overall and a uniform. Mm -hmm. So these cats in heels and suits, they don't own their car. It's on a, some sort of lease plan, mm -hmm. driving around, flossing like he owns the world, like he's walking on air. Renting an apartment from a white person, yeah. or he's paying for a bond, uh, which will take, which is going to buy the bank two houses, and then he's going to come to me and say, "Hi, you silly entrepreneurs! Mm. I got a salary. I got a, I got an office. I'm working on. Oh my God, a Zoom meeting! <laughs> ha! Hey, 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 Check where shackled. <laughs> Check our shackles. We work for the man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. No, Instead of being an entrepreneur, he said, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to wake up at 12. Or I actually, I'm going to work the whole day. and Or I'm going to create wealth. Or I'm going to pick up my children. I'm going to their sports day. These guys are like, we're in shackles. We're in Zoom. Yeah. We're in team. Look at your, me. Ch your children are being taught the wrong stuff. You yeah. can't even go and do to check on it. You know what's crazy though? You say this because um, my son reminded me yesterday. He says, Dad, so he's the only black guy in his class. Mm. They're all Africaners. Mm. He, he gets taught English. Mm. I mean, okay, it's only English that he gets taught mm. in English. Mm. The rest, the Africans teacher. Mm. And I sat and I thought, damn it, what the hell did I do to my son? Yeah, you took him to 1976. <laughs> I took him back to apartheid. Uh, okay, but also, the thing I've learned as a foreigner in South Africa is, is that with Ama Afrikaners, eh? Mm. Is that they either like you or they don't. Mm. Okay, there, there, there are some ones who will work with you. There are some Africaners who are close to being blacks. Yeah. They, they keep it real, you know? Mm. And then there's the others who've got the history behind them. So, it's about... The power of network. I think that's another thing I talk about a lot. Yeah. In terms of saying, um, look at the five, five people closest around you. Mm. Because whatever they're doing is what you'll become. Mm. So if your five friends pop bottles and you drink, in 10 years' time, you're going to be stagwas, all of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But if you're on a crew where you're chasing tenders, you're chasing paper, one of you gets the odd tender here and there, you know your turn is going to come. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so we need to value our networks 
and not party so much. I've never met a country in the world where partying and grooving mm. is an entire existence. It's you crazy. Know, someone lives from Monday to Monday and they are just thinking of the next drink and the next hookup. Mm. You know, and, and yeah. we, we need to we need to step back and just enjoy life and, and, and start realizing that you know time is the currency mm. of time is the actual ultimate currency. Money mm. represents time. Mm. Mm. So mm. when you sell when you work you're selling time. your time. Yeah. Okay. For money. So yeah. when you've created generational wealth and your child is born into a usufruct, which yeah. means that they're born into assets they never have to pay for. It means you've paid forward for their time. Yeah. Therefore, that, that light can grow up and he's receiving interest and passive income and he doesn't even know where it's from, hmm. from some trust, which which Sipo started. And your pictures in the mansion, they know Grandpa Sipo, he started all this. Yeah. You know, this guy here will be in the garage and no one can drive it yeah. because it was grandpa, great grandpa Sipo's car. Yeah. Because he created generational wealth. Mm -hmm. And then you have children who are now born and they choose what they want to do. They, you know, but the, I, I, I'm, I'm working on a theory. I call it the poverty escape velocity. What? Okay. <laughs> okay, I say that slowly. Okay. Poverty escape velo velocity, Sipo, is. The amount of money you need to never be poor again. There, okay. there comes a point where your lifestyle yeah. and the passive income you're generating is much greater than you can eat. Okay. When you're making more money yeah. than you can eat living normally, pover you've escaped poverty. Jesus. And then now you, the money owns you. Because it's creating itself quicker than you can make than you can use it. You that's poverty escape velocity. And that's what you need to work out. You need to work out for your life. How much do I need to generate a month so that when I'm now earning interest, the interest I'm earning is more than I need to sustain my lifestyle. So if your lifestyle is 70 grand a month, you need to ask yourself, how can I generate 70 grand a month as passive income? The moment you've reached that, you're now on your poverty escape velocity. Because it means that you can't look back. You're on a one-way trip to wealth. Wealth is generational. Yeah. You you now have Latin descriptors for you. You're called a testator or a testatrix because you can leave a testament mm. for your for your uh, for your inheritance. Yes. You know. So now you are you are you are you are Latin. Yeah. You know, now we're using financial planning terms where you know <laughs> I'm the testator here. I'm the main man. Yeah. Yeah, and you're the testa T. You're receiving my stuff. Yes. Okay. And you're using my stuff for free because you've got a use of fruct. You know, that's what we should be aiming for. Not this thing of lifetime wealth where you have a after tears and nobody remembers you. It's so true. Um, so now, I mean, let's look at South Africa. Um, it's it, we are the most unequal society in the world. Yep. So if you look at those who are the tester tours, you said, eh? it's like your. 10% at the most. No, mm. two. 2%. Mm. I mean, I read an article that... 2% of South Africa own 98% of it. 2%? That's mm. crazy. I mean, Rupert... Mm. Oppenheimer. Uh, Oppenheimer. Um, all those cats. And they are, they are billionaires by world standards, hey? not by... But, South African standards. But look how they made their money. Where was it from? Gold, diamonds. diamonds. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. And now they they've they've taken on the financial sector. Your banking, your they insurance. They own the banks. They own the insurance. They own everything. I understand it when you're so rich, you don't even need to leave South Africa. Then you know you're rich. You understand? And Rupert, <laughs> you know, and uh, they're not interested. They not never leave. So leave for the what? They own entire provinces. They own the continent. Mm. So why, why go they, to why Europe? Why go to Europe for the what? <laughs> they are kings just, here. <laughs> you can yeah. fly in I and understand out. their own designer brands, tag, and things which people in Europe are buying are owned by cats who live right here in Zanz. It's crazy. No? And and, and our black billionaires, our Motep, it's, it's minerals. So, okay, so here's the formula to billionairehood. Natural resources. Hmm. Dig it out of the ground. Sell it. Hmm. So we should be as entrepreneurs trying to focus in areas where we are back to natural resources, which is animals, food, hmm. digging stuff out of the ground. Because we can feed the world too. Yeah. And but we're exporting 
we're more interested in going to the mall. And and, and that's what I, I did a podcast today that I'd rather get, you know, the, the people who have money in Zanzi, it's the guys who wear reflector jackets and safety boots. Oh, why is that? Because they're dealing in resources. Everyone who wears a reflector jacket or uh, safety boots is doing work which normally people don't want to do. Okay. He's a plumber. Work with He's the hands. miner. Yeah. But they always have cash. Mm. He's a builder. Mm. You know, mm. we've been fooled into thinking that the suit is it's power. Money. No, mm. suit is not money. Suit is actually the ultimate, ultimate symbol of slavery. Because mm. at the end of the day, unless you are a big head honcho who's a shareholder, you are the, that's the slave uniform. Suit and heel and your mini and your what what. <laughs> you're walking around, walking like you're on it. And I used to be one of those cats. So you, <laughs> so, so you cannot even go there because all my pictures, I got tight suits, guys. Yeah. I know how to dress like a slave. <laughs> but I do it so that I can talk to the man and get money up. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I understand my worth. Yeah, you know, but yeah. you must realize your worth. But is it is it because if if you think about slavery, you had a a house nigger, yeah, and you had a a, a field, field nigger. nigger, yeah, yep. So a field nigger would look at a house, house nigger, nigger and want to be him, and, and want the to house be nigger him. is trying to stop all the field niggers from coming near the house. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> and it's still happening. So the the, the 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 house nigger gets mm. there and he kicks the ladder yeah. and he doesn't want he doesn't want anybody to know how he got into the house yeah. or how the house works. Yeah. You know you know those friends where who don't tell you how they make their money. Mm. But you know they are making money. And they'll buy you drinks. And they'll buy you drinks, they'll get you drunk. Yeah. But it, I had a friend like that who you know I'd been sent in, he could spend fifteen grand on drinks and looking like the man. Jesus. And then the next day I call him and say, dude, eh, I need like 2,000 rand just to buy groceries for my kids and my children. Yeah. And you tell you I'm broke. I don't have money. What? But last night we blew 15 grand. <laughs> and that's the mark of the house, house nigger. Because mm. he doesn't want you to yeah. be like him. Mm. He wants you to ride in his car. You know, the guys who tell and praise you, him and praise him. Yeah. You know, you know, a real friend when he says you can drive my car, mm. but he's the one who's like, you can ride in it, but you can't drive in it. Mm. You know, he's the one who come to your house and say, go hook up the hands. Mm. But he always wants to be the man. Mm. And, and we can't have that. We need networks where we, we are, we are, we are, we are decrypting the code mm. of the man where I'm teaching you how to beat a bank at its own game. Mm. How to, Robert Kiyosaki said it, use other people's money to make money. Yeah. Because that's what they do. Yeah. So it's about teaching ourselves how can we do that. And we need to go back to basics. We need to start, you know, just respecting each other again. But unfortunately, the, the system, it's there even at school. The prefects, the house prefects. Mm. They create a hierarchy yeah. of system, the classism of systems. Yes. Uh, there's a book also that was released, I think it was 1994, by a guy called Eric Mieni. Mm. It's called Oman Dingo, The Only Black at a Dinner Table. Mm. So he explains how democracy, post-democracy 94, when black people mm. were invited to the dinner table by white people, mm. invited to boardrooms, and when the blacks get to the table, he wants to be the only black at a table. And, and, and yeah, South Africa is the ultimate story of things that everything that went wrong that could have gone wrong went wrong. Yeah. Before. Firstly, we should not have been invited to a table which was ours. We should have built a table. We should have dictated the terms. Yeah. The so called sunrise, sunrise closes or sunset closes. Yes. Where literally, you know, we, we let guys get off scot free. Yeah. With everything they'd done. Mm. You know, and we, we sang Kumbaya. And it's everything's okay. TRC, what, what? No, a lot of that is exactly that. It's about us. We always compromising ourselves as black people. We mm. always trying to fit in mm. instead of realizing that I left the UK because I was not fitting in because it's a white man's country. It's their country. Yeah. And then I come here now. I'm being told I'm a foreigner. When I married my wife, people are like, "Hey, you mustn't marry our girls." Haibo, why won't you share the ring? I you were sleeping, we were on, sleeping the on the job. We were sleeping on the job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was silent, dude. Yeah. Hey, but now, I'm the one who's being 
told Kuti, no, you, I shouldn't be here. Yeah. No, I should be here because I'm here to say, guys, read the stuff I'm writing. It's to empower us. Mm. It's not for me. Mm. If it was for me, I'd be happy keeping my secret. And that's the power of, of knowledge. And there's very few of us who respect knowledge in uh, Mzansi. In, mm. I don't know. We just want to get rich quick. Get rich get... With 350, I can teach you with 350 a month how you can be making two grand in six months. Mm. And, and the government is giving you 350 every month. But people don't want to sign up. No, you don't want to sign up because with that 350, you need to go and groove. Mm. There has to be a groove involved somewhere. There needs to be some something happening and they're now feeding us drugs. Mm. So they're poisoning our community. Oh yeah, 94, what other happened? What Another thing which they happened was the blacks now had power, economic power. And then the white man said, how can I keep my economic power? Because if these guys take over, they'll run this country. Mm. So they said, okay, let's give them all debt. They created oh. debt. So credit cards, overdraft. You know, back in the day, how easy it was to get into debt. Yeah. You actually, mm. a phone call and you'd have money in your account. Yeah. You know? So it's crazy that they gave us a country that was highly indebted, that we had to pay off the debt. To, back to and them. And then... They put us in debt. Then they put us in debt. So yeah. they kept the economy, gave us the political power. And then they kept and us they, in debt. Yes. And they kept us in debt. And then, and then they changed the system now to say, for you to get a job, you need to be ITC clear. It's Where are you going to find a cat who's ITC clear who's not just come out of varsity? Mm. Because anybody who's lived five, ten years has got debt. That's, and and, mm. and that's the, that's the, those are the new shackles. Mm. They're not using chains. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. We, we think slavery is about chains and kunta kinte. It's not. Yeah. They're using invisible chains. Now, the invisible chain is the debt. It's, it's modern. It's the bond. It's that car loan. It's, it's, it's that job you can't leave because you need it so badly. You it's know? It's the truest account. Yeah, for Shin. You know, it's my yeah. red bat gear. Yeah. Which is yeah. not owned. Mm. You know, mm. it's so, mm. so, so, look, we, we have to, all I can say is let's re empower our children. If you've got a child right now um, going to varsity, I'd rather take them to a TVET college. Do a vocational course. Mm. Teach your child to be a boiler maker or a plumber or an electrician because mm. they don't have to work for anyone. It's, and I think our, so our biggest mistake is growing up thinking we have to work for someone. I saw <clears throat> um, this one African guy. Um, I think, I can't remember his name, but I used to call him Worm something. Um, this guy was a plumber. Mm. He fixed toilets. And he said to me, he says, <clears throat> Look, Sipo, you're going to want to wear a suit. Mm. Me, I'm doing this. I'm driving my 1400 Bucky. Mm. I've got 10 complexes in this area alone. There are mine. Others in Boxburg. Mm. When their toilets are Eight, broken. 800 rand call out fee. They pay me mm. without anything. I can make up to three to 4,000 rand a day. A day. Mm. And you are sitting there. You want to go and wear a suit. Why don't mm. you guys learn how to use your hands? Mm. And this he told me at least 20 years ago. Dude, uh, my, at one point, my neighbor was a plumber and exactly said the same thing. But guys, I don't, I don't make less than three grand a day. Mm. I mean, plumbers make lawyer kind money, mm. you know. Mm. But the thing about it is they just don't floss. Yes. But he's got his house. Yeah. He's got, and when he doesn't want to work, he doesn't work. You understand? He switches off his phone and he's no longer working. Yeah. And Tina, we are stuck with, I need to go to work. Hey, borrow me money for transport. Because you know, you don't show up. There'll be consequences. So, also, when we do start our businesses, we need to stop being greedy. We need to start empowering each other yeah. and, and, and sharing those secrets. So, hopefully we'll get there, man. But it's, it's tough. I mean, you, you and I are doing content and unfortunately, knowledge is not yet valued in Zanzi. Yeah. You knowledge find content. That, yeah. You find knowledge is valued outside South Africa. It's true. People buy books. People watch podcasts. People buy DVDs mm. because they know the power of knowledge. Mm. You understand? Mm. Hence, most people who make it in Zanzi start doing international tours. Mm. And they are making more money outside Mzanzi than here because we simply don't respect knowledge. 
Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Uh, let's talk about your book. Um, <clears throat> you've written three books. Uh, my Money, Your Money, and Youth Money. No. My Money, Our Money. Our Money. And Young Money. Young Money. Yeah. Okay, I like those. Uh, which one came first? My Money was first. Okay. Um, so that's just personal finance. Everything you need to know from if my part... I've got a chapter that says, if my spouse goes to jail, what do I do? You know, that's not the kind of chapter you find in, in a white man's book. No. No. But we know. It's possible. Everybody, we know someone at Sun City. <laughs> and we're not talking about the Sun City Resort. We know someone <laughs> at Sun City. We all have a family member in prison. Yeah. Or who's been in prison. Mm. So we need to understand what to do with their affairs if they go to prison. Mm. I kept it real. Mm. I talked about stock fails. I talked about, you know, how to... To, to teach our children to start earning money and being entrepreneurs early. Mm. So so that's uh, my money. Contracts, what to look out for. Don't don't fall into the trap. Uh, marriage. Yo, that's a big one, dude. You, like, do you get married with... Uh, I'm marrying the wrong... Community. Marrying the wrong chick is the first problem. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, and then the wrong marriage regime. So now if you've got the wrong chick and the wrong regime... Shit! Maybe you're in shit. Okay, yes. Because a woman... <laughs> a woman is like... Um, a woman is a womb, man. And the womb multiplies human cells. Yes. But the spirit of a woman multiplies energy. So you get yourself a slay queen. Yeah. Whose energy is to suck? Justice. What does she do when she sucks? She multiplies the sucking. Yeah. So you're going to be a poor nigga. Okay? If you get yourself a good girl who knows how to help you create wealth and multiply, mm. guess what's going to happen? You're going to be multiply. a rich, rich yeah. guy. Hence, if you make her happy and she multiplies happiness, everyone's happy. Yeah. If you make her sad because you're a cheater, yeah. she multiplies the sadness. You're that miserable guy in the bar yeah. who doesn't want to go home. Yes. So, Understand what a woman is. Yeah. Powerful. Get the right woman. Put yourself on the first right track. Yeah. Secondly, now when you're united and you say we're going to create wealth, power. Yeah. Power. Hence, they call it power couples. Yes. Yes. But they know, they know power couples never last. How, did, uh, you, how did you navigate choosing a, a right woman? I think, you know, she prayed. You she know, prayed. Yeah, she prayed. And Did I, you? I prayed at the time, but <laughs> I taught. No, I prayed more, and then I taught her how to pray, and then she prayed harder. Okay. Yeah? So, so, look, I'm still, we're still not where we want to be, but the power is that had we known what we knew, what we now know 16 years ago when we met, yeah. we'd be rich. We'd be billionaires. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we were still in, uh, we met in the, in the slave farm, in the yeah. field. Yeah. So she was wearing her heels, I was wearing my suit. Yeah. So it took us, <laughs> took us about six, seven years for us to realize, hey, we're wearing slavery clothes here. Yeah. And then we got out. That, that time frame, seven years, it is the mm. right time mm. for you to mm. now start so now working we, up. Then we started business and in business has been going from strength to strength we really we, we're making progress mm. so as a couple imagine you come out with that vision from day one yeah so and then you get married to the wrong regime so the problem is marry somebody who's humble somebody who's simple these slay instagram queens mm. come on guys when the when that makeup is washed off it's just a, it's not even a pretty face it's just a face and and <laughs> I, I, and, and the thing about it is she doesn't respect your hustle yeah. You understand? How you know, fellas, if you're watching this, how you know if you got a good woman is she's your cheerleader. How did yeah. the deal go? How did the interview go today? Yeah. Hey, what's up tomorrow? She wants to know your diary. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 she's the, not being yeah. nosy, but she's no. just being... She's supportive. Yeah. The yeah. ones who want to kill and destroy you, they want to know your wallet. How much money you got? What How are you going to do for make? me? Yeah, what are you going to do for me? Yeah. When you give me my hand back? Mm, I'm waiting for this, this, I'm waiting for this. I come on. Yeah. Hey, you're not even asking how the hustle is going. The best one is even says, you know what? I'm going to join the hustle. Give mm. me a camera. I'll hold it for you. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll help you dress up. I'll do, I'll help you increase our wealth. Mm. And most of these chicks these days, they're not like that. They're not. They, they want your wallet. They want you to see what can you do for them. It's because know? the niggas find them at that spot. Yeah, and they try to impress them there. So now you must maintain yes. it. Yes. <laughs> and and, and, the, and the, the girls will tell you, I didn't, I, I don't need to change. I've always been the same. You found me. Like How are, are you found me digging for gold? Damn, you nigga. promised me gold. Yeah. So when I ask for gold, produce. 
Yeah, I'm a gold digger, I'm nigga. I'm a gold digger. <laughs> That's my job, you know. Whereas you go and you get yourself a good, simple girl who's who's trying to build wealth, who's yeah. looking after her family and empowering them. Yeah. You know, good if you bring her your way, she gonna do stuff for you. Mm. So, so we need to realize that's a big chapter. Very, I think I have five, six chapters about relationships, yeah. and even my podcasts and videos. There's a lot I talk about relationships and how cheating steals money out of your your life. You know. Also, for those who don't know, ah, come on, the side chick is just chowing your money. Yeah, she's chowing yeah. money. She, <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't care about you. Yeah, she doesn't care about you. And all she wants mm. is your money. And, and 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 you know, a good woman when you're broke, she got, She's the one who's sending you the e wallet. Yeah, and, and you don't have to ask. Yeah, you know, yeah. she so knows. She knows. Yeah, you know, and so that's my money keeps it real. Our money was about entrepreneurship, you know, setting up a company, registering a company, the paperwork, the tax, um, the contracts to avoid when you how to spot a dodgy ba- a bad business deal, hmm. you know, how to spot franchises and how they can screw you over, how how to 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 build a network to create wealth, so we can create wealth as business people. So. I was once asked to join an Africana network. Yeah. And in that network, they had eight people. I think they had a lawyer, accountant, financial planner, builder, doctor, um, electrician. What are the other? There's another two or three professions, but they give each other a cell. Okay. And in that cell, everyone gives each other business. Okay. Wow. Okay. And they meet every month, and everybody has to stay in the cell. We need to feed each other. Yes. So you all grow. Yeah. Okay? And that's what we need. Mm. We need that network where there's somebody who's doing our own networks where we meet every month, and it's like, how many leads? Mm. My, I need to lead this. You know, mm. you can't go hungry. Mm. Hence, you know, they own a lot of small businesses, Africaners, but they are worth a lot, mm. okay? Mm. Because they have these networks. Mm. Jews have it. Indians have it. We need to start creating our own networks. So you and your... But f- we have them. I mean, there's a Black nah, Management Forum. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, no, no, uh, the no. Black Lawyers Associations, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Black Accountants no, Associations. No, 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 no. Those All these bla- black Those black associations are there to fight whites. They're there. <laughs> those black associations are all trying to beg for white capital. Yeah. So they are begging for for more business from whites. Yeah. They're not creating black business. So so yeah. for me that's my main fundamental problem with black professional associations mm. because they're not uh saying let's give business to blacks. No, they are more interested in in getting the crumbs mm. from the white man's t- table. Mm. You know whereas you know if if um if the black management forum was serious instead of canvassing and trying to get us to appoint black CEOs on the JSC top 40, they go and say to government, shut down tenders to non non blacks. Yeah. That's empowerment. Yeah. Not 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 to say inv- put us on the white man's table. Yeah. That's and that's yeah. what all these black societies are doing. It's mm-hmm. like eh, I want to be white. Please may see me as a good a good black. No. Yeah. No. Black executives are no, struggling no. in the white. Uh, no, or, no, no, but no, no, we're no, not no. actually building. There are small more white business. executives. It's their company. <laughs> how? How do you come to my house and tell me I must put you on my table? I've got my own children, nigga. Please, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, so, and we don't see it. We don't yeah. see it. These black associations are supposed to be controlling black money. Yeah, they're, they're supposed not. to be shutting down. Black townships to say, okay, support us. Yeah, money is leaving money the townships. Is, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, instead of doing a blockade of trying to stop people from going to work, stop money from leaving the township. Bloody bastards. They That's how think. it is. That's how it should be. So yeah. we should be fighting to say, in a black township, in the black more black owned businesses, black money. Black money must stay in black townships. Instead, yeah. we are more concerned with how can we be more white? You know, the craziest thing I read the other day, I was trying to look at the economies that black people control. So I looked at the stock fell, that uh, it's worth $24 billion a year. Mm. The taxi associations, oh, the hair tax, industry. Taxi is huge. The tuck shop industry. Proper, and it's cash. 
It's cash. It's all a cash economy. And and there are blacks who have money, eh? They are. So, so let's... Let, the problem is... We've, we've learned to identify wealth from a white man's lens. That the wealth must be sitting in a bank. Yeah. There's taxi association owners or um, taxi owners who are billionaires. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Yeah. They've got cash sitting and lying around. It's just that it's not declared so that sales can come and collect tax. For sure. You know? So we need to start just embracing those kinds of routes. I did, I did a calculation the other day. So uh, Alexander Taxi Rank, I think... There's maybe a thousand or two thousand taxis there, and each one pays like a hundred rand every time it ranks. So you say two thousand taxis mm. and uh, multiply that by a hundred. That's tr- that's almost twenty million a day mm. just by ranking once. If they come two three times, and that cash isn't the taxi tax association. So so the money is there. We just need to 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 also. Respect people who are not educated and black. Because the taxi owner is looked down on. Because he never went to Model C. Mm. But he got money. He got ends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's the same thing where we just need to, to, to go back to where we were. Because when we were growing up, we respected the taxi owner. Because when your mom didn't have money, that's where she went and borrowed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Very true. We, we look down on our kind simply because they have not been educated by white standards. Is it? Is it because we? I mean, I saw even some black lawyers in Africa wearing those white hair thing in Africa, and mm. I, and I thought, it's oh colonial. my god, we, we, we were, haven't changed. No, like, no, no, no. We're still uh, as long as you're a black person still fighting to be white, you have not discovered yourself. And and you judge each other on the level of whiteness. white education yes. to say, I've got an MBA, I'm an MBA, MBA student, I've got a master's, I'm a. Yeah. Uh, mm. Where now you are stupid because I, you didn't go to school. I went to Saint What What. I speak good English, guys. Me, I was un- I was unemployed with good English, eh? Just hungry with good English. Hunger is the same. Whether you got good English or go <laughs> bad English, hunger is hunger. Okay. Brokenness is brokenness, good English or bad English. So, so those are the things we need to, 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 to just come together. To me, if I said, let's come together, it's about let's come together and we buy some land and we just take over and we stop making excuses for being broke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. You know? Is it hard for us to work together as black people? Yes. Why is that? Because the white man came and he, he divided and ruled us. Okay. And we are still divided. Mm. We, we are far from coming together. We are far, 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 far from, from coming together. Mm. The moment we are alone in a room, it's like, but I'm Zulu. And you're mm. You know? Mm. So, never so, stops. so it never stops. Mm. And we need to, 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 to realize that the common enemy is the one who came and took the gold mm. and created a global economy with our gold. Mm. And it's then crazy. they make us owe them mm. for everything. There's a, another book that comes to mind now that we're talking about this called The Capitalist Digger. Capitalist Digger, yeah, I read that one. Those are the books people need to read. Hmm. Oh, you know? And Cap- I mean, it was a bestseller, but black people still haven't changed. No, it was a bestseller, and who bought it? Mainly white people. It's crazy. I mean... Hey, how many, how many blacks do you... Hey, when I do my talks, yeah. so I normally say, imagine yourself, your mansion... I know people, blacks have no problem imagining the mansion. They just don't know how they're going to get it. Yeah. But they can imagine it. Okay? Yeah. So they can tell you all the rides they've got in their mansion. And then you ask them, what are the rooms in your mansion? They'll mention a kitchen. They'll mention a stud. They'll mention a, a games room, a man cave. The one room blacks never mention in a mansion, which when I do white talks, this mansion is a library. Oh. And that simply points to our lack of hunger for knowledge. Jesus. You and, know? And the Bible I, did say my people will perish. Because of lack of knowledge. So, so w- were they mentioning black people at the time? It's not That's about black <laughs> To me, you know, going to a house and it doesn't have books. Yeah. So how are you guys doing? You're surviving on the river. Yeah. Watching, watching us tell stories of us being gangsters. And laughing at each other. Wow. Wow. And how are we going to get out of that? 
because we make stories of house niggers and field niggers and we laugh at them, mm. you know. Mm. But there's no black business program on Mzansi yeah. where we are, we're, we're talking black business excellence. That okay. trains on Sunday. Yeah, you know, and, and, and when yeah. they do have a black business um, program, it's to give props to those who've made it. Yeah. I want a black business problem with, program which says today, guys, to, we're starting with our 350. Mm. Tomorrow we're buying this stock. Mm. Meet mm. you next week. Next week we've done this with our stock. Let's do this with that. We, let's create programming mm. which empowers as opposed mm. to programming which makes people feel good like they've achieved. Mm. And I'm not being a hater. I totally respect all those cats who've made their money with their hands mm. and it's good for them to, to, to be role models. But if they're not actively empowering others behind them, mm. the ladder's gone. Absolutely. The ladder's gone. Mm. You know, you can, you, can, you can go and say to the cat, yo, you make nice sneakers, but he's now selling them to me. Mm. He's not telling me how I can make my own sneaker factory because he's scared if I get my own sneaker factory, he won't make as much. Mm. You know, but but he could come and say, okay, um, my sneakers need boxes, my sneakers need shoelaces, my sneakers need glue. Hmm. You know, hmm. and you can create three or four other entrepreneurs to work with you. Hmm. Very true. Whereas we 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 are too scared of competition. Hmm. Um, I, I, you know, I think for those who are watching, we're not complaining. No, and, we're not. And, we're not hating. We're, we're not, not hating, hating but no. we're just saying, what is the problem? Because we have a big problem that's facing us. Mm. Unemployment is high. Mm. Joblessness is a is a big mission, especially among youth. They we're sitting at sixty percent of unemployment, and we have more than sixty thousand unemployed graduates. Um, we have a growing inequality in our country. So there's a big problem. There's a big problem. So so do we have the solution? No. But all I'm saying is we need to just collaborate better. Yeah. Um, we are long overdue a black bank. Yeah. yeah. You know, a bank owned by blanks, by, by blacks for blacks. So one of the things which I wanted to do was to start a mutual bank hmm. where in our bank, it's youth who bank there. And in each township, we identify a network. Okay. A bakery. Uh, what else do we need in a, in a community? A butchery. A butchery. Dry cleaner. A dry cleaner. Yeah. So we identify as a mall okay. of businesses. Yeah. And we lend to them. Mm-hmm. And you do that to every township. Mm. Mm. Suddenly, how many entrepreneurs are we creating? We employ other blacks and we're lending them black money. You know what's interesting? And, is and, that and the way it works, it's, it's like... Brilliant. It's like the Ugandan system. Ugandan boys, when they get married they don't pay lobola mm. it's the elders the men who come together put money together and the boy that goes and marries hmm. when that boy is grown up what does he do that's the same thing mm. so we want to do that same thing with business where we seed a set of businesses who know they belong to our network hmm. and when they're successful they repeat hmm. and they repeat and they give birth and they give birth and i think that's the biggest problem with our businesses as hmm. blacks is that they don't give birth birth to other businesses mm. whereas with pretty much every white business you can identify three or four other businesses which were birthed from that one business let's look at liberty life mm. started by a jewish guy called donald gordon mm. okay in the late 50s early 60s out of liberty life how many other organizations have been born mm. standard bank came out of came out of that um momentum came out of that discovery came out of that what yes Huh. So, so I didn't know. So the guy Donald Gordon who started Liberty Liberty Executives went and started mm. Discovery. They went and started Momentum. Mm. They went and started FNB. Ryan Merchant. So they're all they're Jewish all related. Boys, they're all yeah. related. Mm. But do they hate each other? They saw this pie was big enough. Do mm. they hate each other? They don't. Mm. Are they killing each other? Mm. No, they 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 they're, they're not fighting. They're not fighting. In fact, they embrace each other and they help each other. Yes, initially when one breaks off, there's a bit of beef. But then after a while, they realize, ah, you're making your thing, I'm making my thing. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Done. Done. And, it's, and, and they give birth to lots of little businesses that way. Hmm. And they keep the money flowing. Because hmm. money does not stay still. Money flows hmm. all the time. It's like energy. Money can't stand still. Hmm. Money is always flowing. It needs to work. So so you need to realize 
you stop the, having this mentality. I must hold on to money. Money will never. You'll never hold on to a cent. Mm. You must just send it somewhere. Mm. Send it to go give birth, mm. to multiply. So it's 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 that kind of thing where we 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 can't identify things from our community where we've given birth to other things. If anything, when someone dies, mm. full stop. Mm. We can all name a black business which died with the founder. True. I mean, uh, we all grew up in our homelands. We've seen small businesses, shops. Mm. When the father dies, the shops, the taxis are all going because the child mm. squanders everything. There's no, there's no continuity. And that's the thing. If you look at the white children, the white Jewish boys, they go to board meetings when they're youngsters. They mm. know how board meeting functions. Mm. You know, they, they, you know. Instead, we, 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 instead of teaching our children. So, if I'm a taxi owner, instead of teaching my child the taxi business, I send them to a Model C Saint something in the middle of KwaZulu Natal, mm. and they're playing rugby with the white guys. And then when I die, this cat can't even speak Zulu, so yeah. he can't even talk to the drivers. Jesus. And that's where we lose it. Yeah. We need to realize that. Stop disrespecting the game that got you going. Stop disrespecting your mama selling eggs and chickens and now saying, I don't do that. Stop disrespecting cabbage. So the cabbage yeah. made you grow up, dude. Mm. So don't go around saying, I'll never eat cabbage. If anything, when I eat a spoon of cabbage, I think of mama and like, she worked hard. Mm. Mm. So we are growing up to hate our history. Mm. So if you can't embrace your past, how are you going to create a future? And That's I'm not true. saying let's all have cabbage every night, mm. but I'm saying our mentality yeah. is such that we hate everything about our past. Mm. But instead of embracing it so that we empower ourselves to take everything about our future. Mm. So, 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 you know, like um, when the whites left Zim mm. and so the, what did the whites say? The country's finished. Burning, there's nothing. No. Go to Zim. Everyone watching this, go to Zim. There's rich black cats. Mm. Rich cat, black guys with helicopters. <laughs> so, we replaced white rich people with black rich people. Is that not a good thing? With taking industries that they own. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. To me, it's, 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 it's progress, yes. Was that, there's corruption. Corruption is everywhere, guys. Mm. Even in America, there's corruption. Colonialism was corruption. So, so mm. all I'm saying is we need to start reading our own narrative yeah. in terms of what blackness is and what it means to embrace blackness. You know, um, yes, I, 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 don't, I don't embrace illegals. Mm. I can't. Mm. Because they're taking someone else's job who's legal. Mm. You know, mm. those 60,000 graduates can't be losing jobs to illegals. Mm. But I can't also um, not point out the fact that there's not enough entrepreneurs. True. Mm. Not enough guys want to sit on a counter and make 800 rand in a spaza every day. Mm. Mm. That's how much you can make on a spaza. But Sipo standing there, ah, 800 rand, my feet will be sore. I won't have time to share. La. Ha, when will I go groove? Ah, no, I can't do that. Yeah. You know? So I, 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 and I have to sleep in that, in that container. Never. And it's a, it's a, they were saying that uh, this puzzle shop industry is a 10 billion uh, a, a day kind of business. A day. And people thought a day is too much, but they think about how much people buy food every day. Just because like, they don't have fridges, they don't have electricity. Just like we, we, if we wanted, we could replace those businesses like the bread. Remember when we grew up, every 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 shopping center mm. had a bakery. Yeah. And we used to have fresh bread. It can still happen again. Yeah. You don't have to have that rubber bread. You know, if you yeah. have a bakery and you get your local community to support you, you'll kick the rubber bread out. But those are the conversations I'd rather I won't plan to unlax and whatever he calls himself should be having. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to de defend Maponya Mall full of white shops. Yeah. Crazy. Go and campaign for Maponya Mall full of black shops. Yeah. That's yeah. progress. And That's empowerment. Yeah. You know? So, so we've got it wrong. We've got it all wrong. 
You know, I'm, I'm defending the white man's show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on TV. Everybody loves me. Because, seriously, dude. <laughs> seriously, dude. <laughs> go fight for your mama to get a shop in there. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. Go fight for your brother to get a shop in there. Because you know, all that money that goes yeah. into Maponya leaves yeah. away to leaves as so quickly it as it goes in. Yeah, it's not going. It's not going to you probably try to kick out the foreign niggas. No, yeah. if you are saying I'm Mr. Soweto, show me Black Soweto. Yeah, you yeah. know. So and I'm, I've got nothing against you, dude. If you're watching this, but yeah, but it's just let's have those deeper kind of thinkings to say, you know, if we want um, to address your point which is the most unequal society in the world is we need to start empowering ourselves by force mm. by force by force and 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 there's little things government if they wanted they could cap the size of a tender mm. and say every tender above x amount has to go at least to an x number of people that's true you know mm. that 400 million tender you could cut it into 20 Mm. And you get 20 deserving people who can do 20 jobs. Mm. Instead of all of it going to one guy who's going to go and fill his car up with, uh, fill his venture up with with cars and not have a library. Absolutely. So true. Um, my brother, we've been talking for about an hour. I think you and I must have a part two. And because as you talk, I get like a hundred questions lined up. And I mean, so much more about your your other book yeah young so we money. need to talk about that an image image we need yeah. to talk about debt in detail mm, because in detail. debt especially like what you pay back on interest yeah. uh whether it's a short-term loan whether it's a vehicle finance whether it's a home loan mm. a credit card um, and even bank charges and bank mm. fees. I mean, all of these things I'd like us to mm. to break down as time goes. And also, I think one of the most important things is like just um, the different types of taxes we now pay. There are so many taxes. Understanding how it all works, how you can try and get out of it in terms of reducing your exposure. And you can, hey? Tax is very easy to, to, to not pay tax. Spend money on your business. Because every rand... Oh. So every rand you 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 spend on your business developing it and growing it is is deductible, tax free. Yes. So, but when so, you pay yourself, you pay more. Yeah. So that's the thing. Let's stop being consumers and become builders. I was actually shocked to hear that uh, if you get a hundred rand, okay, let's say you get paid ten rand, mm. that out of your ten rand, you probably keep thirty rand. Yep. Seventy rand goes to government in all forms of taxes. So if you're on a 40% or 45% tax break, uh, um, PAYE, then you still have to pay VAT, your VAT, petrol, yeah, your rates yeah. at a house. You probably mm. have a 2 million rand house or so or more or whatever. I, I totally agree. Probably 30, only 30 rand, three, or 30 rand survives. 30 rand 100. survives. And uh, even that 30 rand, you're going to spend it mm. and you're going to pay more on VAT. The biggest and most powerful empower of wealth is the government. And, yeah. and we need to, to get it to empower more people because that's, that's, that's the money which can be used to seed a lot of stuff. Is, um, is the government the mafia? Look, like, gov do they gov run... Government are supposed to do services, but I, I mean, you saw the other day the Auditor General was, was speaking and... I mean, they said only 25% of municipalities have their books in order. Yeah. Listen, he said that in some municipalities, they hire accountants from outside to do their accounts. Yet they have an entire accounts department in the municipality. Yeah. But that accounts department is comrades. Yeah. Caters. COO. Yeah. And all of them. Yeah. So then they hire accountants outside to do what they should be doing. And it... If they wanted to fix it, it's easy. Seriously. Yeah. It doesn't even need an MBA to fix government. It's about saying to a municipality, if your books are not in order, no more chill it. Hmm. Watch how quickly books will be fixed. But yeah. the books can't be fixed because the chill it is missing yeah. for a reason. So, sure. so because people want chill it to keep missing, uh, Auditor General can't do anything. Auditor General can make a directive tomorrow. Every municipality which, is, which books are not in order... Um, is 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 we taking over, yeah. and we run it centrally. They could if they wanted, but, but sadly the thing is, I mean, there's a few municipalities that have been under administration for that particular reason, but 
It's just the problem just doesn't seem to go away. Like the Auditor General, every single year, Look. when they report on local government's finances and other state, it's like, it's, it's such a Look, painful it's, exercise. It's, it's, it's inefficiency. Yes. People are not doing what they're being paid to do. Yeah. And that's the worst kind of corruption. So I'll, I'll end with this joke, which okay. I once heard. Yeah. And it, it illustrates what corruption is. So there's two students, one from Asia and one from Africa. And they go to Harvard Business School and School of Transport. And they get their MBAs and transport. And they go back to their countries. And 10 years later, they, they're both ministers of transport. Okay. So the African guy, the Asian guy says to the African guy, dude, come. Come see my country. African guy lands in a nice airport like OR Tambo, beautiful terminals, jumps onto a highway, toll great, toll gate, eight lanes, express, drives into a nice suburb, goes to the, to his friend's house, and his friend is there, and he's got beamers, and he's got mercs, and like, hi, African is like to his friend, Ndod, how did you do this? And the guy said, no, remember when we had Harvard? where they taught us how we can apply for the World Bank loan for transport. So I built all the roads, I built, built, the, I built the airport, but I own the company which owns the toll gates. That's how I make my money on the side. Mm. Okay? Cool. Few years later, African calls his Asian guy. Asian guy arrives at an airport, which is like an aerodrome. It's like Kruger National Park aerodrome. You know, it's dust roads all the way. They need to be in what's that mark the, the the box one it's called uh, uh, the G G what oh the G wagon G yeah. wagon yeah. yeah they need to be in a convoy of G wagons just to get to this old house <laughs> yo 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 yeah. eventually they reach this gate and on that gate ta for fourteen kilometers now it's smooth but they're in someone's yard. Yeah. And this guy is looking, he's seeing flamingos, he's seeing <laughs> ducks, he's seeing peacocks, he's peeing green grass. Ah! Botanic Gardens, he arrives at the house, Urus, Lamborghini, Just... Ferrari, you know, all the sexy cars. Ah! An Asian guy goes to his African guy and says, dude, how, 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 how? The African guy says, you know, remember that World Bank loan you told me to get for transport infrastructure? I ate it. Just both were corrupt. Okay? Hmm. The Asian was corrupt, but he did what he was supposed to do. He hmm. built the highways. He built the airport. He found his corner to make money corruptly. Hmm. But the service was delivered. Yes. The black guy, no receipt, nada. Ate everything. Ate everything. That's corruption. Like a pig. And and that's the difference. When people go to Cape Town and you say, hey, DA, don't say there's no corruption. No, there's corruption. In that cleaning contract, which is given to another white guy, there's a bit of corruption going on there. But there's cleaning happening. Yeah. Whereas in Joburg, ANC's type corruption, there's no cleaners on the roads. But somebody's getting invoicing every month. So all I'm saying is corruption is, is there. But... It can be done in a way where people actually benefit as opposed to actually poof, poof, poof. Yeah, very true. My brother, damn, you and I can talk for hours, man. This was an enlightening conversation. I really appreciate you taking time. Uh, thanks for sharing your knowledge. No, uh, no, no. It's, and it's, and everything I said is to empower head. Let's not, yeah. don't do dart boards of me and try and Googling me and sending lightning in my house. Hey, don't send lightning. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't actually. work. <laughs> I pray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I really appreciate your time, my brother. Thank you so much for being so insightful. And I think, you know, uh, one of the payoff lines the ANC always used was economic freedom in our lifetime. And, um, and, and will we ever get to see economic freedom in our lifetime? And if we don't have these conversations, we're not going to get to that point. We're going to become the slaves, like you have mentioned, the slaves of debt, the slaves of things we buy that have mm. no value, and just the slave of competition. Uh, look at me, I'm better, I drive this car, da, da, da. Mm. So all of that is going to keep us in a financial slavery that we're never going to recover from. So, But I think uh, the more conversations we have, the more we empower each other, the more we read 
as black people, mm. the better we'll become. And, uh, and w- my hope is that our kids are going to learn the mistakes we've made. Like we've learned from those who came before us. Mm. They can learn and say, no, man. Something not right. Something not right here. Mm. Why is daddy, why are you doing all this mm. mess? So we're hopeful that our kids will be able to look at these types of videos years later and say, damn it, mm. actually, there's a model we can create. Look, there's a model. And I think it's about just managing our expectations. I mean, I'm sitting here in a Merc, which is what? How old is it? 44 old? years old. 44 year old Merc. Yeah. I drive a 16 year old Merc. Yeah. Do you really need to drive the latest car? If, a car A to B. Yeah. Those are the kinds of things, you, choices you make every day, which yeah. can save you money or actually cost you money. Actually, I think what I want to talk about is just uh, the uh, at our next conversations also, because we said we'll talk about debt, is that vehicle debt. Mm. People don't realize what a big ripoff. No. Big ripoff that is. And, and, and if you speak against it, people think you're hating. No, no. Because no, now no, you're no, like, no, oh, no, why no, are you no, telling me not no, to get a nice car? No, you're I'm driving on the back. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, this has been so amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Please continue to like and share. Where can people find you, brother? It's Ask Gerald CFP at Ask Gerald CFP on most um, social media. Also, I have a um, a YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. It's called What They Don't Want You to Know About Money. Yeah. What They Don't Want You to Know About Money. To know about money. So it's W. Yeah, just do the letters, man. Yeah. That's how you can Google it. What they either type what they don't want you. To, so they don't want you to know about money or simply type out the first letters of each of those words. You pick it up, got about 30 videos and we load one every three days. And I saw they're very quick and to the point and very direct and yeah. uh, you don't have Max- to sit long. No, 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 no. Quick Maximum 10 point. minutes. Maximum yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. Generally one minute, two minutes. No, brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, my brother. We're up next. We're going to be checking you out in the next episode. Thank you so much. We're out ya. Peace.